concerns, they are everywhere. Conditions such as below affect their growth. Weather, soil and rainfall. Well, in weather there are different types. It could be warm, hot, cold or very cold. The process of changing to suit the environment is called adaptation. The natural home of a plant or animal is called its habitat. Now let's pause for a second and think about which habitat you belong to. Based on habitat, plants can be placed under two groups. Terrestrial plants that grows on land, aquatic plants that grows on water. In the next slides, we will learn more about terrestrial and aquatic plants. Let's now learn about terrestrial plants. There are seven types of terrestrial habitats. They are deserts, hills, marshes, plains, grasslands, forests, and coastal regions. Were you able to identify which habitat you belong to? Let's now learn more about terrestrial plants. Deserts. Deserts are areas of land that receive little or no rainfall. Temperature on a day could get very high. Due to scarcity of water, Desert plants adapt themselves. They obtain water from soil which is deep under the ground. They also prevent loss of water. Few examples of desert plants are cactus, palm and acacia. Cactus plant shows following adaptions. The water stored in thick stem is used when there is no rain. To prevent loss of water through transpiration, the leaves change into thin sharp spines. Photosynthesis is carried out by the green stem. The roots are spread out wide and deep to absorb water. We learned about a new word today, transpiration. What is transpiration? Transpiration is the process of losing water through the stomata of leaves. Stomata are cell structures on the surface of leaves that exchanges carbon dioxide and water with atmosphere. Temperature in hills varies from cold to very cold. Trees growing in hills adapts to survive cold conditions. Few examples of plants from hills are below pine, fir, and cedar. Cedar is also known as deodar. Pine tree shows following adaptations. They are in conical shape that helps the snow to slip off branches. The leaves are needle shaped and tough and remain fresh and green forever. Pine, fir, cedars never shed their leaves and remain fresh and green forever. Hence, they are known as evergreen trees. Next time when you get closer to a pine tree, try grabbing some pine cones. These trees are also known as conifers because they bear cones instead of flowers. Male cones have pollen and female bears seeds. Marshes. They have plenty of water and clay soil. In clay soil, air space is very little between soil particles. Hence, roots of these plants don't get enough air to breathe. Plants growing in marshes show following adaptations. So their roots obtain fresh air, don't get choked or rotten with water. Mangrove trees grows in marshes. 
like the picture what you see here the roots of this plants are above the water these are known as breathing roots plains have a moderate climate not too cold or hot they get sufficient rainfall people and banyan trees are commonly found here they shed their leaves during winter to protect from cold hence called deciduous the new leaves appear in spring other examples are coconut mango shisham and teak they grow in hot and damp regions and are evergreen well you might be quite familiar with all these plants forests are thickly populated with different kinds of plants many varieties of trees shrubs and herbs are found here there are evergreen deciduous and coniferous trees in the forest they are home to wide variety of animals and birds here is a picture of a forest The California redwood are supposed to be the largest trees in the world. Of these, the most famous are coast redwood and giant sequoia. Grasslands are large areas of land covered with grasses and wild flowers. The roots of grasses and small plants make it rich for farming. Soil is bound together by their roots. they receive less rainfall hence less trees can be found grasslands are home to a wide variety of wild animals here is a picture of a grassland coastal regions they receive high rainfall and the water can be salty these are the places which are near to sea the common plants that are found here are coconut rubber and pepper pepper is also known as black pepper or black gold now let's recap the previous slides there are seven types of terrestrial habitats plants adapt to its habitat and these habitats are deserts which are home to cactus hills which are home to conifers like pine which are evergreen marshes that are home to mangroves that has a breathing root plains which are home to the deciduous plants like banyan and mangoes forests which are home to deciduous conifers and evergreen trees or plants grasslands where you can mainly find less trees and more grasses coastal regions which are home to coconut plants grow in water too there are mainly three types of aquatic plants they are floating plants that floats freely in water fixed plants where the roots are fixed in water and the third type is underwater plants where the plants will completely grow under the water floating plants are the plants that floats in water hence their adaptation include making their bodies light be able to float easily on the water few examples of the floating plants are water hyacinth water lettuce and wolfia which is also known as duckweed below features helps them to survive in water they have spongy bodies that is filled with air these spongy bodies helps them to float this also makes them light which helps to float fixed plants are those whose roots are fixed to the bottom of the pond they have adapted to be able to float get enough air and sunlight to make food avoid get damaged by floating water to get these they have hollow and flexible stems that helps them 
not to get damaged by flowing water. Flat and broad leaves that helps them to get sufficient sunlight. Waxy coating on the leaf to keep it waterproof. The stomata is present on the upper side of the leaves. Few examples of fixed plants are lotus and water lily, which are very common in southern part of India. Some plants remain completely underwater. They have to adapt to remain underwater and breathe underwater. They do this by a variety of things. Their roots get fixed to the bottom of the pond. Their thin flexible stems offer little resistance to water currents. Their leaves also do not have stomata and breathe through small air spaces in their system. Did you know that aquatic plants remove the carbon dioxide present in water? released by the aquatic animals. Few examples of aquatic plants are hydrilla that have tiny leaves and tape grass that has narrow ribbon-like leaves. Let's do a quick recap. There are three types of aquatic plants. Floating plants like water hyacinth, fixed plants like water lily and underwater plants like hydrilla. With that, we have come to a conclusion of adaptations in plants. Thank you. See you next lecture. Subscribe and like our video if you enjoyed the content.